Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, happy holidays and especially Merry Christmas to all of you. And we're just getting ready to kick off the uh, holiday weekend. It'll be kind of an extended holiday with Christmas coming on a Tuesday, and a lot of us are off on Christmas Eve, so it makes it a really nice, really makes it a nice four day weekend. I want to drill down today on the, it's not often, many of you have said Rosie used to do the uh, weekly eco-investment updates, and for many years I did. But in the early part of 2018, especially when I was coming on January, February to, uh, to chats like TR Preppers chats, uh, you know, showing charts and trying to show people where we were in terms of this stock market, particularly what happened post-election of Trump in 2016, November. And many of you will remember the early part of that evening when it suddenly came out the shock that uh, Trump had won the uh, presidency and won the election. The futures for trading the next day, that Wednesday morning, went from showing a minus 700 points on the Dow to the next day we were up, I think, something over the order of 500 points. A tremendous reversal, and it kicked off a trend that lasted for the better part of almost two years, this final drive up of this bull market. There wasn't really much to talk about on that, you know, because as I told at the time when showing the charts and things of, of market moves, when you have something that's a parabolic move, and it hits the end, and it starts to climb like a rocket at the end. They're symptomatic of moves that are coming at an end, and not somewhere at the beginning or the middle. So, as I told people at that time, I chose to begin to stand aside. Does that mean I missed out on some of the things? We had the big drop of January, February. Yeah, I thought that that might be the beginning of the big uh, big swoon, the one that we're currently engaged in. But no, we had one more attempt at a very feeble, we made a very feeble new high in the markets. And then since that time, we've probably reversed into, if not a, uh, you know, bear market in a sense of traditional, but certainly in a technical sense of what defines a bear market. I don't say that to give myself a pat on the back because you'll find in life the less decisions that you make when you're investing, the better. I always like when Warren Buffett, uh, when he talked about investing, he said people would do so well in life if they were given a, if they were given a ticket and each of the, each of their tickets, each person's ticket had a, a place where you could punch 10 holes in it. In other words, in your lifetime, you could make 10 big decisions. Not 100 small ones, but 10 big decisions. Buy bonds, sell stocks, buy stocks, buy precious metals, put your money into CDs. His theory was that people would do a lot better because they would be thinking in a more macro sense. And I really like that idea. And I really think that that's the way I try to do things. But now we've come to a point where we've now seemingly crossed this threshold in America here. And as much as we've talked about prepping since 2015 on the chats that I happen to be in going forward, it's always been something out there in the future, something to do that we just sit around and wait for that day to happen. Well, they're never going to ring a bell. But perhaps, my friends, they're starting to ring a bell now. And this is my advice at this particular time. Okay, it's too late to get, you know, we can talk about getting out and blah, blah, blah. The reality is, if you look at the charts of the market, there's really nothing to support the market for a good distance down here. But we can take steps to make sure we protect ourselves. Remember what's coming. We have, an indic we have a Democratic uh, House coming in in uh January, 
we have a situation where the disenchantment with President Trump is going to grow, the friction points, the, the fights, and people can perceive that. Okay, so there's this sense that, that things may not get better here, but they may get significantly worse with controversy and in politics. And then we're getting ready for the 2020 election. And then if things really go into the can, which I expect that they might, then it might be a time of real radicalism comes back into the political scene here. Now, if you wait at that time, if you wait till that time to really finalize and tune up or begin prepping, it's probably going to be a bad time. The time to do it now, you know, it almost became passe. It's almost ironic at the time that you probably most need to step up your prepping game is the time when most people have burned out on it and said, it's never coming. It's like waiting for something that's never going to appear. And ironically, once it really does appear, you know, we're not really in a position to recognize it anymore. So I'm just saying for me to purchase additional, and I'm not an alarmist person, but it's a good time when friction's still relatively low to be out there making sure that I'm plenty stocked up on that ammunition, that I am able to take care of myself and Missy Jen for, and other family members for an extended period of time. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad thing to do in life in general. So many live paycheck to paycheck that uh, things aren't provisioned. We're not going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about our own provisioning here on the Rancho, but it's been a long and calculated uh, series of steps forward that we've taken over the years. So we feel pretty good. We'll be locking in a few additional steps over the coming uh, month, particularly if we can do that before the new year comes in. Because, of course, in our state of California, things uh, become bluer and therefore more restrictive. You don't want to be one of those people that waits for the day when you suddenly realize, oh, I should have done this, or I should have had that, or I should have grabbed that when I had the chance. You know, we saw in Baltimore two or three years ago how rapidly that blue line of police can collapse. Okay, and a lot of cops aren't going to want to put themselves in a line of fire when things like Occupy Wall Street and civil protests occur and things like that. It's going to be a, a more rugged future. I'm not predicting dire days. What I'm thinking about is a time when there's more friction when there's more people that are potentially desperate and when the realization comes and hits people that you're going to be dealing with the future with less, not more. And you might have to take cuts in certain benefits that you're getting from the government. Who knows? But it's not going to go damn well, particularly amongst the people that have been super unproductive and have been sucking at the tit of government year in and year out. It's going to fall very hard on them. So we shall see. Anyway, it's not to put a negative cast on Christmas, but we have to be realistic about things. We have, a, we have an investment climate now that is so many standard deviations away from the norm. When we usually talk about happy Christmas rallies, eggnogs, singing Christmas carols on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, to a point where people are fleeing for their lives in their capital down there. Instead of celebrating, they're in dread. We have to be realistic about stuff. We don't, we don't set the playbook, but we do have to take the ball in our hands and run it down the field. Anyway, for Missy Jen and I, a very Merry Christmas to you. Enjoy it. We will. We will put all these thoughts out of our head and uh, move forward and enjoy a very happy holiday. But, uh, you know, the trend continues here, and uh, we just have to respect that. Okay? But if you haven't begun prepping, think about it. 
okay? Before you shoot that last wad on Christmas gifts or something like that, think about maybe something practical for yourself and your family. And uh, thinking about self-defense should be very high on the top of that list, okay? Thanks for watching, everybody.